pretty much every desktop CPU that you could reasonably want to run Linux on, whether it's from AMD or Intel, is going to make use of microcode. This is a small amount of code embedded directly into ROM on the CPU. This is used for controlling various low-level hardware operations and things like that. No matter what you do, it is always going to be there. And when I say pretty much every desktop CPU, I don't just mean modern chips. Even going back to those ancient ThinkPads that some people like to run, those are going to have CPU microcode. No matter how free and libre your operating system, your software, and all of that stuff is going to be, you are always running proprietary code. And over the past maybe five or so years, ever since Spectre and Meltdown, updates this microcode whilst not happening every single day are happening a lot more frequently than they once were. And amongst certain free software advocates, these updates can be a little bit contentious. But there is a project out there called Libreboot. This might seem like a complete left turn, but follow where I'm going. So Libreboot is a replacement to the proprietary BIOS that ships with your hardware. Now being such a low level project, it has fairly limited hardware support. And amongst the hardware that is supported, the hardware that works really well is an even smaller list. But amongst the people who really care about everything on their system being open, Libreboot and Coreboot are really popular projects. And until very recently, specifically June 25th, when you installed Libreboot, the ROMs that you downloaded would include the microcode updates. Now once again, no microcode ROMs are available. Just because this is available, doesn't mean you're being encouraged to use it. But why even make it then? Well, very simple. Freedom of choice, that's why. Libreboot's policy explicitly states in the context of adding binary blobs, it's natural that the user may want to create a setup that is less Libre than the default one in Libreboot. This is perfectly acceptable, freedom is superior, and should be encouraged. But the user's freedom to choose should also be respected and accommodated. You should have the freedom to be less free if you want to. If you want to have a system that is entirely full of proprietary software, you have the freedom to do so. Much like you should have the freedom to have a system that is entirely Libre, even down to something like Libreboot. In other words, do not lecture the user, just try to help them with their problem. The goal of the Libreboot project is simply to make Coreboot more accessible for otherwise non-technical users. That's the more charitable interpretation, but Leah also roasts them as well. It's natural that some people may wish to cause random kernel panics, RAM init failures, thermal safety issues, random data corruption in memory, and other similar issues commonly caused by lack of microcode updates. Such folly should be discouraged, but the user's freedom to choose should also be respected and accommodated. If you want to have a broken computer and a broken CPU, you are totally free to not update your microcode. But don't do it, it's a bad idea. So it's pretty clear where Leah and also I stand on microcode updates. I think if the microcode update is there, you should absolutely be installing it. You're not avoiding proprietary code by not updating your microcode. The proprietary code is already there, it is baked into your hardware. Your options are broken proprietary code or working proprietary code with a microcode update. So it's pretty clear where both I and Leah sort of stand on this issue. The reason why I'm making this video is Libreboot's official stance on microcode. So in their view, the microcode updates, the updates that you actually install, those don't qualify as software, but the burned in microcode itself, the stuff that is on the CPU that cannot be changed, that is the software, but the updates only provide hot patching, essentially turning on and off certain features. The CPU already has older, buggier microcode burned into mask ROM, so the choice is to either update it or to encounter more bugs. And in a separate post about what binary blobs be included in Libreboot, it says, an exception is made for CPU microcode updates. They are permitted and in fact required as per Libreboot policy. This part was written before the change was reverted. These updates fix CPU bugs, including security bugs, and since the CPU already has non-Libre microcode burned into ROM anyway, the only choice is either x86 
or Broken x86. Thus, Libre Boot will allow Core Boot mainboard configurations where microcode updates are enabled, if available for the CPU on that mainboard. Regardless, this is a point of contention for some people. The reason why this is contentious is this is basically the opposite stance to the FSF. I've shown this before, but the Free Software Foundation has a certification called RYF, respects your freedom. If your product has this certification, it is 100% free software, it is 100% Libre, and is going to respect your freedom. Mostly, depending on how you define freedom. All the product software must be free software. The product software includes all software that the seller includes in the product, provides with the product, recommends for use in conjunction with the product, and steers users towards installation in the product. And that by itself sounds perfectly fine. The problem is the second paragraph. There is one exception. The exception applies to software delivered inside auxiliary and low-level processors and FPGAs, within which software installation is not intended after the user obtains the product. This can include, for instance, microcode inside a processor, firmware built into an I.O. device, or the gate pattern of an FPGA. The software in such secondary processors does not count as product software. Now note the fact that it says microcode inside the processor. That is a very important distinction. Due to the fact that CPU microcode is stored on the hardware in ROM, read-only memory, when you download a microcode update, you're not actually modifying the microcode on the CPU itself. Instead, what is happening is every time you boot your operating system, the microcode updates are being loaded from your hard drive and telling the CPU what it needs to do. So unlike the microcode on the hardware itself, which is running on a secondary processor, the microcode update is running on the primary processor. What exactly does that mean? Well, with the microcode embedded onto the hardware, this is microcode that you cannot change, so it is just not relevant to the problem. But with the microcode updates, those are something used in conjunction with the product. That means they are suddenly a problem. This diagram explains it really well. This is about Wi-Fi firmware, but the idea works the exact same way. In this case, the drivers are both free software. The only proprietary component is the firmware. On the left-hand side, the firmware is embedded into the hardware. The FSF endorses this because the firmware is baked in and part of the hardware. The user cannot replace this firmware. But what if instead the firmware is outside the hardware and as you boot the operating system, the firmware is loaded from a drive? It's still proprietary. It is just as proprietary as the left-hand option. The FSF calls this non-freedom respecting. Yet the firmware is possible to reverse engineer and replace. The right-hand side option is superior for freedom. No matter what you do in this case, you are going to have proprietary software. But the FSF argues that having it embedded into the hardware is more freedom respecting. And for me and Leah alike, this does not make any sense. To be fair, the FSF does say we want users to be able to upgrade and control software at as many levels as possible if and when free software becomes available for use on certain secondary processes, we will expect certified products to adopt it within a reasonable period of time. But until that's the case, if it is embedded on the hardware, it just doesn't matter to the problem, even though it's just as proprietary. Honestly, I don't know why this problem exists. Maybe there is just a misunderstanding that every CPU works like an FPGA, a field programmable gate array, where you can actually customize that CPU and reprogram it to do literally anything you want. That's not the way that your regular x86 CPUs work. It would be really cool, it would also be really expensive, so it's not a thing that exists. And here is a bit more context for why Libre Boot is making the change now. A small but vocal minority of users are unhappy with the presence of these microcode files, so it has been decided that the Libreboot project will once again accommodate such users. This change has been implemented in the most unintrusive way possible to keep the build system logic clean, contrary to the bloat that existed in many older Libreboot releases. In previous releases of Libreboot, no microcode was the default. Microcode updates were excluded entirely from all releases. This policy changed during November 2022 as part 
part of an ongoing campaign to support more hardware from Core Boot within LibreBoot, so as to provide many more people with Core Boot, which regardless of blob status on each platform, does provide increased software freedom compared to fully proprietary boot firmware, which is what people would otherwise use. Thus, LibreBoot's modern policy is pragmatic, advancing further the cause of software freedom. By contrast, LibreBoot's previous policy was to ban all binary blobs, which meant that many mainboards from Coreboot were excluded. This resulted in less people achieving a level of software freedom because to this day, nothing quite like LibreBoot exists with the scope and ambition that it has. LibreBoot makes Coreboot as easy to use as possible for normal, non-technical people who like the idea of Coreboot but are not competent to configure it from scratch. That would be... that would be me. I'm slightly above normal, non-technical, but I have no idea what I'd be doing if you ever chucked core boot at me. Accordingly, the old LibreBoot policy prior to November 2022 harmed the free software movement. Such harm was corrected in November 2022. And going forward, it is the intention of the LibreBoot project to eventually have build targets for every main board that core boot supports. Basically, including a little bit of proprietary software massively increases the range of supported devices. And by making that trade-off, you can have a lot more devices that can have a lot more software freedom. It certainly seems counterintuitive, but think about it like this. If a device only needs one random little blob and suddenly it can use LibreBoot, maybe adding that blob is actually a good thing. And people who don't need it, they can get rid of it and go about their day. At the end of the day, it is all about freedom. If you want to have no CPU microcode updates and have a broken CPU, you're totally free to do that. If you want to update your microcode and actually have x86 do what x86 is supposed to do, you're free to do that as well. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you run CPU microcode updates? Do you run LibreBoot? I would love to know. Maybe you run CoreBoot. Let me know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrubs that we paid linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And my hardware definitely does not support LibreBoot. Anytime,